Hey guys, I'm Carrie from Counselor Carrie, and today I'm going to walk you through all of the updates to the brand new reimagined Worry Warriors group counseling curriculum. Let's take a look. Okay, let's take a look. So I have the entire group curriculum in a one inch binder and everything fits in here. So I have all of my copies, all of the student copies, everything's in there. It is pretty full. You can see from this angle, it's pretty full one inch binder, but it's all in there, everything that I need. So I've got a table of contents here so I know where everything is for each lesson. And then um, I've got this pre and post screening tool. So there's two different versions for students. There's this one with the thumbs where they're just reading a statement, thumbs down if it's not true for them, um, sideways thumb if it's sometimes true for them, and thumbs up for if it is true for them. And then I also have just this one instead of the thumb. So never, sometimes, often. And then this is an adult reader form. So you can give this to teachers or parents, whoever you're trying to get the adult reader um, to be. And then there's a scoring guide over here. So some of them... Um, are opposite so you have this here so you know how to rate everything on both of the pre and post test forms okay here we have lesson one you can see it's outlined we've got objectives up here a scripted outline broken down into each part a materials list and your ASCA standards this is a talking stick I haven't printed it or I've printed it obviously I haven't assembled it yet so you can just cut this out and put it on a craft stick or you can put it on a long straw or one of those glitter wands anything like that to make a talking stick this is the let me turn it sideways little get to know you craft that they can do so it's two shields on the top they're going to put their name and draw three symbols that represent them and then on the second part you can do this part if you want or you can cut it off it really doesn't matter um, just whatever works best for your group they're going to write two to three things that they want the group to know about them and then they'll cut them out and glue them together so it's just like a little flap and then this is a closing activity depending on how much time you have in your groups it's a roll and respond just to get them um, talking and get to know each other Okay, now this is session two. It's all about what is worry. You're gonna be talking about the physical signs of worry. So there's this one that's labeled and then there's a blank one that you guys can fill out together. And then what I also added in here, this wasn't in the old version, is a little booklet that you can print and read together. So what is worry? It's kind of like a little storybook. Um, it talks about the physical effects of worry, get into some brain functions. But it basically just explains to them what worry is and what the function of worry is. So you can print that out and keep it in your binder. And then there are two versions of this handout. There's one um, that's a body outline where they can write all of the physical effects like um, this handout shows. Or if you have students who aren't writing yet or aren't comfortable writing, you can do it this way where they pick three colors. And this one says, I feel worry here a lot. So it's the part of their body where they really feel a lot of physical symptoms of worry. They're going to color that with that color. I feel worry here a little, or I don't really feel worry here. So they're just using three colors to color the body outline. And you can just put all of your copies of the handout in this page protector right there. So they're all ready to go. And then because you're talking about worry, you want to end the session with a calming activity. This is a worry warrior breath. You can just use this script to lead them through a few breathing exercises. Now, session three, all about grounding. Got some visuals that you can use here and um, also a little script that you can use um, at the end of the session to practice some yoga. So you're introducing two skills in this session. Um, I did include in the file a different version of this that says I can stretch to calm my body in case people at your school are touchy about the word yoga. Okay, here we have personifying worry. This is one of my favorite sessions. This is when the students make their worry monsters. So um, we'll talk about what a worry monster is. It's something that creeps into your mind. It can make it hard to think, make it hard to act, and then ways that they can tame their worry monsters. So things that they can say to their worry monsters. And then they can build their own. So there is a version in here where there's just a handout with a worry monster and they can name it and then write a few things around it about what their worry monster says. It's just no cut version, but this is really fun. Um, kids really enjoy this. So they can make their own worry monster. There's lots of different options. They can choose a body, choose arms, choose legs, choose eyes and choose a mouth. And then they're just going to glue it all together. But this is a little booklet. So it's not just the monster, but you staple it to make a booklet. So the little pages say things like when my worry monster is around, I feel, my worry monster comes around when, my worry monster leaves me alone when, and I can tame my worry monster by saying. So they can all make a little booklet just to introduce their worry monsters and to practice their self-talk that they'll use to tell their monsters to get out of there. Okay. Um, session five is all about making the connection between thoughts, feelings, and actions. 
So if you're working with younger students, um, you may modify this one down a little bit, but I think most of your students will be able to handle this one. There's another booklet here. It's all about the chain reaction of thoughts, feelings, and actions. And um, it talks about how when we change that initial worry thought, it can change our feelings and our actions. Then there are these little puzzles. There's two separate ones. So first your students are gonna start with this pack and well, I can't really see it. I'll try to open them. I'm doing this one handed today because my tripod is broken. So I'm having to hold my camera, but that's okay. We'll make it work. Okay, so here we go. Um, there are five or six of these worry thoughts, and they're going to read a statement. So this one is, what if someone makes fun of my new shirt with my favorite character on it? And then they're going to pick out how they would feel. So this one, probably embarrassed, embarrassed or worried, and then an action. Um, I choose not to wear my shirt. That was lucky. That's the one I picked up first. And then they'll pick how that action might affect their final thought. Let's see. No, not that one. People think I'm weird. Maybe something like that. So there are five or six of those. And then they're going to just kind of analyze how that initial worry thought affects their feelings, actions, and then other thoughts down the road with the chain reaction. And then after they do that, and they can do these puzzles where they start instead of with a worry thought an alternate thought so it's a reframed thought and um then they'll see how that alternate thought affects feelings thoughts and actions and how there's a difference in how they change when we reframe there's a visual aid to kind of help with this so when your worry monster's sneaking in worry warriors stop they reframe that worry thought how else can i think about it what else could this mean what else might happen is there another explanation so this is a brief introduction to that skill that they'll get more into later um, session six is in or out of my control we know we have lots of students who are worrying about things that are outside of their control so i have this visual this is for the self-talk that they'll practice at the end so i can't control this but i can control that um, the activity here they have a worry warrior and there are two versions of this there's the male version and the female version um, but you're going to cut this out this is a little foldable that you can assemble and then i just glued it onto the worry warrior um, and it's a satchel so you can see it opens up and there are all these cards that have things on them. So the students are going to decide if it's something they can control or something they cannot control. So my behavior, of course, you can control that. So we're going to stick that one in the satchel. Let me find one. Let's see. Other people's feelings. Obviously, we can't control that. So they'll leave that one out. Okay. And if you have extra time or you want to make it fun, you can hide these cards around your room and have students find them. And when they find one, they get to put it in the satchel. All right, session seven is all about thought checking. So with this one, we've got another book and it talks all about worry warrior special skills and how worry warriors can check their thoughts. I've got a visual to go along with this one too. So look at all the facts, think about the past, look for counter evidence, look for alternative explanations and put it in perspective. Now with this one, we have this mat. So I actually put this, instead of just in a page protector, I have some of those dry erase pouches. So I'll just slide this sheet right in there. And then there are thought bubbles that the students will have. So I've cut those out and laminated them. And then they just place it on top and they read the worry thought. And then they're probably not gonna use all five of these thought checking strategies, but maybe one to two, they're going to just write what it is on top of that dry erase um, board. So the example that I'll use, there's a thought that says, when we made eye contact, she was laughing. Oh no, she's laughing at me. Everybody's laughing at me. So look for other explanations. They might write, um, maybe someone just told her a joke, something like that. Okay, so then they can just swap out the thoughts and dry erase everything so that they can check all of those and get some practice. And then there's a handout for them to do it with their own worry thoughts as well. Now, this is really fun. I made these two for your students that they could um, either attach it inside their notebook or they could put it on their desk. And I'm not gonna be able to take this out and do it one-handed to show you, but basically this blue strip has all the thought checking strategies on it and it's inserted inside that magnifying glass. So this the magnifying glass slides. So they can just kind of slide it for all the strategies so they can keep it with them to reference later. All right, session eight, my responsibilities. This is all about kid responsibilities versus adult responsibilities. So I have this little activity for them. And again, if you want to hide these around, make it a little scavenger hunt, you can do that. But on these cards, there are things that are kid responsibilities and things that are adult responsibilities. 
So they're going to put the adult responsibilities inside the briefcase, kid responsibilities inside a backpack. And these are just folded over and stapled on the side so you can slide the cards right in there. So we have things like solving problems between parents, paying the bills, keeping the family healthy, and then things like picking up my toys, doing the right thing at school, being kind to others, things like that. So they'll just slide those in and then they can practice more self-talk about that's not my responsibility, but this is. Session nine, all about controlled breathing. Now, I really love this session. I've included four different things that they can do in terms of controlled breathing. So you can practice all four strategies so that they can really find one that works for them because not every kid is gonna like each one. So we've got pinwheel breathing. You will obviously need pinwheels for that. This one is rainbow breathing. Um, they're just gonna inhale on the bottom arc, arch of the rainbow, <laughs> exhale on the top. Then we have birthday cake breathing. Inhale, smell the cake. Exhale, blow the candles. This one they can count on their fingers. Inhale for one, two, three, four, five. Exhale, five, four, three, two, one. Just count it down. So you can teach them how to do that on their own without any kind of visual aid. Um, and I do have smaller versions of these if you wanted to give them cards. Now, the other part of this exercise is I have about, um, I think, 16 of these. So it's a build your own breathing exercise. And all that's on there is just an image. So um, if you have extra time and you think your kids will enjoy this, they can make their own breathing exercise. So there's a little line for them to name it. And then it just, the instructions are right here. When you inhale, and then they're going to fill this in. When you exhale, do this. So they might come up with something like inhale going down, exhale going up, things like that. Or they might, uh, it could be a tracing with your finger thing, or it could be imagining you're a dragon. It's really up to them. So they can be creative. And there's a bunch of those they can choose from. And then there's a big visual that you can have on your bulletin board. All right, session 10, all about progressive muscle relaxation. So I have a script here for you, and you're just going to walk them through um, imagining that they are worry warriors going to a worry warrior party for arms, they talk about how worry warriors love orange juice. So they imagine squeezing oranges and that's how they're gonna tense up their arms. And then it just walks them all through that. So that's a really fun script. And then I've also got this um, yoga visual that you can do at the end after you've done the progressive muscle relaxation. And I did include this one with the word stretching as well and with little cards. So if your students wanna keep them, they can. Session 11, I love this one. It's all about social supports and people that they can rely on. So we talk about what makes a supportive person, how we know people support us, and then they get to make a worry warrior battle buddy. So I've got a male version and a female version of this. So on here, they can write the names of four of their worry warrior battle buddies. And then they're gonna cut out, okay, I got it back here, cut out one of these shields. I've just taken a chunk out and you can attach it with a brad. So you can kind of see right there. And then this isn't a page protector, but you can turn this so it spins to show one at a time. All right, session 12, last session, termination session. Um, I have this three, two, one group reflection that you can use as a visual. So three things you learned in group that really stuck with you, two things you'll do differently because of what you learned in group in one way you'd like the group to support you even after we stop meeting. And then there's just a bunch of supplemental printables and I don't even have them all in here um, because I wouldn't necessarily use all of them, but I know some people do like to use some of the extra things, but I have these certificates. So there's the male version and the female version. And then I have these Worry Warrior Battle Skill cards. Oh, these aren't in the bag. Well, anyway, so I've got all the skills that they learned in group on these cards. So it's a deck of cards that you can make with them and they can cut them out and then attach them with a o-ring or something like that so they can keep it with them after group so that's just a quick look at all of the updates coming to the worry warrior group counseling curriculum if you've already purchased it you of course get this update for free and you can just re-download it from your my purchases or from the email that you got from me with the update so let me know what you think let me know how it's going for you and good luck with your worry warrior group